What if I told you that YouTubers like MrBeast are able to shatter the YouTube algorithm to pieces and gain millions upon millions of views just by making a thumbnail? Well, if you give this video your full attention just for the next 10 minutes, you will also know that only 5 secrets you need in order to finally crack the YouTube algorithm and achieve an unimaginably high click-through rate. And for those who decide to stay until the end, I will give you a bonus secret that even Mr. Beast doesn't want you to know. But starting with the first secret, which is clickbaiting your viewers. But wait. Don't click off yet. When I say clickbait, I don't mean this type of clickbait. I mean the type of clickbait that Mr. Beast uses. Yes, you heard that right. Even Mr. Beast uses clickbait in every single one of his thumbnails. But the difference between these two thumbnails is that Jimmy actually delivers on the clickbait. You may see one of his thumbnails and be pushed into a state of shock at the sight of what he's just uploaded, so you click on it. Because you're now intrigued to see whether he's lying or if he actually did it. And once you watch the intro, you see that Mr. Beast is actually going to deliver on this outrageous thumbnail that he put on his video. So for you to do this, you'll need to take the main premise of your video and slightly exaggerate it in a way that the audience won't believe. But if you're doing this, you need to be careful that you don't over exaggerate it so much that it just becomes flat out clickbait. And now would be a good time to mention that I will actually be making my own thumbnail throughout this video. And as the video progresses, I will be using each secret to improve the thumbnail so that by the end of the video, we can create the best thumbnail possible on YouTube. And as we're making a thumbnail for a video based around small YouTubers blowing up, I think we should just put a small views analytic just in the middle of the screen. So moving on to the next secret, which is actually just keeping your thumbnail simple. Now you're probably thinking that this is easy and you knew that already, but again, in order for this to work, you need the perfect balance between an overly simple thumbnail and a thumbnail that just nobody will even be able to understand. And luckily for you, over the years of research I've done for YouTube, I've actually managed to see what makes it so that you can perfectly balance on this beam. And that is that you only need up to three subjects in your thumbnail and then the background. And if you choose not to follow this rule, I found that your thumbnails can just become way too confusing and overcrowded. Let's take a Mr. Beast thumbnail for example. His 1000 deaf people here for the first time video. As we can see in this thumbnail, there are, as we said earlier, three main points of the thumbnail. First we have Jimmy, which also gives him the brand recognition so that you can see that it's his video. We also have the child and then finally the bright green hearing device. But in order to make a good thumbnail, you don't even necessarily have to have three subjects. You could even just have one or two. For example, in his $1 versus $250,000 vacation video, the only subjects he has is him and the hotel behind him, then obviously accompanied with the very vibrant background. So when designing your next thumbnail, just make sure not to overcomplicate things and think how you can get the main point of your thumbnail across with as little elements as humanly possible. And speaking of which, let's check back on the thumbnail to see what changes we can make. So to have enough subjects in this thumbnail whilst also keeping it simple, I might just make this a bit smaller and put it over here. And then to add another subject, I might bring myself into the thumbnail here. And then let's add some text that says only one video, because this video is about small channels blowing up with one video. And with that, we now have three subjects in the thumbnail and a background. But these last two secrets are utterly useless if you ignore this next secret, which is having a good amount of contrast in your thumbnail. And when I say contrast, your brain might be jumping to the bright, multicolored, mildly headache-inducing thumbnails, those of which are very typical of kids' videos or just videos targeted at a slightly younger audience. But I actually don't mean that. Instead, I'm talking about specifically choosing certain colours that either stand out from each other, complement each other, or just have an overall nice look to them. So before you sprint over to all your thumbnails and immediately start cranking up the saturation on all of them, let's first see some of the best colours that work well together, so that you can apply these to your thumbnails and as a result allow a lot more people to click. For example, blue and yellow seem to work very well, as we can see in Mr. Beast's $1 versus $500,000 plane ticket. Also, purple and green seem to work very well, as we can see in again Mr beast if you build it i'll pay for it and as a bonus cheat code if you put any bright vibrant color on a plain either black or white background it will almost guarantee to pop out as we can see in these two thumbnails right here and we can even see that mr beast uses this trick in almost every single one of his thumbnails but to avoid this video turning into a mr beast case study we'll go back to working on creating the greatest thumbnail on youtube by adding the secret to it now for this what we're going to do is make the views a bit brighter and now the green stands out a bit more let's actually rotate myself in for something a bit more eye-catching and vibrant, which is simply just a man with a hood with bright YouTube logo in the middle. Also, it might be worth adding a bit of a blue glow in the background so that everything just sort of stands out a bit more. But if you think your thumbnail is perfect as it is now, you might want to listen to this next secret, which involves thoroughly analysing the similar thumbnails in your niche. But before you skip over this point to the final point and the bonus secret, you first need to know that if you go off by yourself and create an entirely new thumbnail concept that has never ever been seen before on YouTube, it will 
will probably have more of a chance of not succeeding than it does succeeding. I'm not saying that you should straight up just start copying everyone in your niche, but it definitely wouldn't hurt to see what the common themes in your niche are, and even taking aspects of the most popular thumbnails on your specific video topic and incorporating them all into one thumbnail that fits the same theme. You see, this would be beneficial to your video because you would have more of a chance of converting the already existing viewers that watch all these big creators in your niche over to your videos. Because, well, if your thumbnail is similar to the theme that is shown in the niche, then viewers will be more inclined to click on your thumbnails as they would have been more familiar with, well, already clicking on those thumbnails. Let's take the niche that you're watching right now, for example, the YouTube education niche. The largest creators that my audience watch are mainly channels such as Nate Wealth and VidIQ. So if you've heard of these channels before, I'm probably correct. And well, if you look at their thumbnails, you can clearly see that they mainly include graphs and statistics that can easily inspire the viewer and motivate them to click on and watch the video. Hence why my videos and thumbnails include the same elements. But I must stress that when using the secret in your own thumbnails, make sure you don't completely copy and take their thumbnails because, well, firstly, it's against YouTube's rules and secondly, viewers won't want to click on it if they've just clicked the exact same thumbnail 20 minutes ago. And with that, let's update the thumbnail with the secrets and tips that we've just learned. And now for this secret, we need to make it so that there's graphs and graphics that are similar to everyone else in our niche. So let's add a graph line and fill in the graph like so. And whilst we're at it, we might as well just bring in some graph paper like so and move it to the back so that it doesn't look that weird. And there we go. I think our thumbnail at the moment is looking quite good. But what if I told you that this entire time we've been missing half of the reason as to why your thumbnail still isn't working? And that's because the title of the video actually contributes to more than 50% of the click-through rate. Because after all, you could have the greatest thumbnail of all time, but if your title looks something like this, I hate to break it to you, but no one's clicking on your video. So to avoid this problem, make sure that your titles are short, sweet, and to the point, trying to keep it under 60 characters so that it isn't cut off either. Also, you may want to include certain words that just look better. There's no real way to properly describe this in a way that everyone watching this video will be able to understand, but I'll put it like this. Which title would you rather click on? How Mr. Beast did really well on YouTube, or how Mr. Beast broke the YouTube algorithm. As you can see, the word broke in all caps manages to stand out a lot more than the other title because, well, it just does, okay? But with this being said, you also need to make sure that your thumbnail matches your title well because otherwise, viewers may struggle to be intrigued at your video. One way to do this, for example, is making the effort not to include things in your title that would also be in your thumbnail. This would mean that the viewer might read your title and then get something in the thumbnail which adds onto it, therefore further enticing them to click on the video. So with this in mind, let's head back over to the completed thumbnail we made and come up with the perfect title to match it. So now we need to make a title to match the video and seems that this video is about small channels breaking YouTube. I think I'll go for the title how small channels broke the YouTube algorithm with broke in all caps. This is because the broke will stand out and it's relatively short and just quite an interesting title. But now we've managed to make the best thumbnail and title possible, we can go and post the YouTube video. But it flops completely. Every YouTuber's worst nightmare. But luckily for you, we still have a bonus secret to cover, which will actually help us tremendously with this problem right here. And this is actually changing your thumbnail and title after you post the video. You may think I'm weird for doing this and messing up the YouTube algorithm, but when every single big creator is doing this, you know it works. For example, whilst we were watching me create this thumbnail throughout the video, I was actually also making three other thumbnails, which could all step in and help with the video if the current thumbnail doesn't work. The reason people switch out thumbnails is because, for example, thumbnail A could be a lot better than thumbnail B, meaning that when people see thumbnail A, they click on it a lot more, therefore leading to a much higher CTR and the YouTube algorithm deciding to push the video out even further and giving it a little boost of views. And this will become even more easier once AB thumbnail testing is completely accessible, as this will then allow us to post a YouTube video with three different thumbnails which all show to different viewers. And if you want to know how well this thumbnail that we made actually did, then you could take a look by clicking on the thumbnail on the screen right now. 